Governor Ifanyo Kowa, your knowledge of him, Professor, predates this administration. How best would you describe Dr. Ato Ifanyo Kowa as a man and as a politician? Actually, my knowledge of him long predates his, uh, his being a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Well, he's a man with um, a soft mien, I would say, or a soft external appearance that uh, belies the, the steel structure in him. He appears very soft, but uh, he's a tough, stern person. A, a, a very passionate leader, a passionate leader, a committed person too, and he can be very jovial. He can be very, very jovial, but people do not know that aspect of him. He can be very, very jovial, but in spite of that, he will still make you to do that which is expected of you. We're speaking from the angle of a commissioner. He makes you enjoy the, the job of a commissioner. It's like you, you like doing that job. He uh, pushes you to, to deliver. He pushes you to deliver. Um, uh, a good boss, a very good boss. A very, very good boss. But sometimes he can be a slave driver. <laughs> he can be a slave driver. You have to get this to me before so-so time. I want this on my table in the next 48 hours and all of that. And you see everybody's campering. You know, when the directive comes like that, you pass it on like that to, to your subordinates. This thing must get to my table by so-so time so that we get to the governor's table at the expected time. But at the end of the day, you wonder whether you were able to really achieve that thing within the deadline given. In other words, it was achievable. All that was needed was just a little push, and that's what, that is what it does as, as a leader. It pushes you beyond the point you thought you could not go. And uh, it's, it's achieving results. It's enjoyable working with him, very enjoyable working with him. Christian Antecedent, Guba Association has never been a tea party in Delta State. You were notable, Professor, for your stance on Governor Kowa succeeding his predecessor. This time, there is so much fish in the kettle. How best will you describe Governor Kowa's disposition to who succeeds him as Governor of Delta State, since there were many gladiators in the ring? Uh, why don't you just come straight? Because uh, when you ask questions like this, uh, you're going this way, go straight to the point. <laughs> The general accusation that oh, he was favoring a particular candidate, he has candidate S to contest and all that. You see, those of us who are not contesting and did not contest have a lot of information. And the, the, the governor, in this regard, behaved like the bishop or the pastor. Whoever came to him, he prayed for. I, I challenge anybody. I challenge any of the aspirants to fought what I'm saying now, that he went to the governor to tell him of his intention to contest, and the governor discouraged, you know, the governor encouraged all of them. I repeat, the governor encouraged all of them. There was one who was so loud about it, his only campaign was that it was Governor Kowa who told me to contest. <laughs> he, didn't do he didn't do well in the primaries. <laughs> He didn't do well in the primaries, but he told the whole world that it was the governor who told him to, and we believed him too, because whoever went to the governor, the governor blessed. The governor prayed for, because the governor did not know who would emerge. God would determine. So, suppose he refused to pray for A, and it was God's decision that A should go. Well, why not just pray for everybody so that you fall into the hands of God too that uh, you pray for at least for the one that governor, uh, God will want to come in. I can tell you categorically that every one of the aspirants had the blessing of the governor. There's an Urubu saying, we be back away. Meaning in pigeon, may God bless you, they see the work put. Abi? Yes. Hey, go, go, I don't bless you now. Go walk. 
Let the blessing for come out. So after the blessing, the rest is in your hands and in the hands of the delegates. I know there were del the delegate issue in Nigeria at this period was like shifting cultivation. And it will shift from statutory delegate to ad hoc delegate, then back to statutory. President of Federal Republic of Nigeria disqualified from voting <laughs> in a primary election. It happens in Nigeria. So some had uh, pimped those who whom they will get. But by the time the out came, it had changed. So you had to start afresh. And this race, uh, it was a long distance race. The distance was much. You know, you started, some fell by the wayside. I mean, they really fell by the way. Nobody pushed them away. Nobody came to tell you, join me. No, 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 continue. Yeah, those who, a few, a few got to the tip. But one person arrived there first. What I really, we, 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 we resist any day, any day, is the accusation that uh, one person was the governor's uh, uh, preferred uh, aspirant. No. Everybody was his preferred aspirant. At least they came to campaign to us too, believing that we had influence with some uh, with some uh, delegate. They came to campaign to us, and most of the time they came. Most of them said, ah, "We met the governor. Go uh, I met the governor. Governor said we should contest." Like each of them who spoke to me told me he had the blessing of the governor. So how come is one person that had blessing? If you had somebody's blessing and uh, you are denied that you had that blessing, you have God to contend with. Okay, you are talking of governor and all that. What of bishops? Whoever went to the church got the blessing. And we assume that the pastor or the bishop uh, is speaking in place of God. Would you go and attack the bishop that uh, he prayed for A? You were there when he was praying for A. You were not there when he was praying for B. But actually, the bishop also prayed for B. Would a Catholic Reverend Father tell a Catholic eh, who was interested in governorship of Delta State that I will not pray for you when the whole job of the Reverend Father is prayer? That's what he was ordained for, just be praying for people. And then people came to be prayed for and you say you will not pray because uh, uh, you don't believe he should be governor. That's not your responsibility. Right? Same thing with the governor. Same thing with the president. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, whoever came to him from APC that he wanted to be president, he blessed. And that's why each time they, each time they came out of Asso Rock, they were beaming with smiles. <laughs> and then the followers would start jubilating. Buhari has blessed SYZ. The next one will go, he will also come back smiling. And because the followers were not there, there were many interpretations. Yeah, you see, he's smiling now. The president just told him that the other one who came, who is not going to be president, you are going to be the president. Then the third one will go, all of them. If I don't want to mention the names of the aspirants in, in, in Delta State for the governorship position one by one. But if you mention, I will tell you that this one went. He got Governor Kowa's blessing. This one also went. All of them got the blessing blessings of the government. There were members of the state school who resigned to go and contest uh, various positions. So governorship, House of Reps, House of Assembly, the governor prayed for all of them. Apart from some having met him individually, he, he prayed for them generally in our presence. And we all chorused, Amen. You get the point now. So let us leave that. That uh, governor was dancing towards a particular uh, aspirant. No, it's not correct. Final word on that. Each of the aspirants had the blessing of the governor to contest the primaries. At my local level, I knew really not. Many persons wanted to go to the House of Assembly from my really not constituency. True. I prayed for all of them. I prayed for all of them. Fellow elders in Ugali not prayed for all of them. Only one has emerged, Nabi. Yes. And would you say I didn't pray for the others? People pray to be billionaires and they don't even have a cup. No cup comes to them. It doesn't mean that we didn't pray hard enough. We prayed hard. It's just that uh, God had said, this is the person who will go. This is the one who would go. Truthfully. 
We as leaders pray for all aspirants. All who dare come to us, we welcome. In my father's house, there are many mansions there. If you are not a governor today, you could be this tomorrow, you could be this tomorrow. Many of them are very, very young, and I mean extremely young. So the future is very bright for them. My appeal is the primaries have come and gone, right? As a PDP man, I would tell the PDP members, let us move forward. Let us move forward. And because we have APC people in our communities too, and not talking as an elder, look, somebody has emerged as House of Assembly candidate in this community. You don't go and split your head over that. Somebody from another community won. Yeah, when, when a person didn't win it, we don't do that. The idea is let the party move forward. And of course, the party is supreme. And before they went into the race, they agreed that whoever won will receive the support of the losers. And I always tell people who go into such races that if you win it, do not lose your head. Yeah. And if you lose it, do not lose your heart. That is that. Speaking of moving forward, the PDP Delta State, which was perceived as an integrated family, appears to be hugely factionalized, arising from the primaries with an overt inclination to work together, at least as we perceive it from the outside. How best can you describe the road ahead for PDP Delta State, Professor? It's very smooth. It will be very, very smooth. Yeah, you were in supply. Okay, you might not have been in supply when we did, we did the senatorial primaries for Delta Central. You needed, needed to see Amuri and uh, Nani after the primaries. It was like they didn't go to a contest against each other. And you saw them chatting very heartedly at Abuja when they went for this uh, uh, presidential, uh, presidential primaries. Who, who, who is going to work against uh, the other in that, in that kind of uh, environment? None. It's people outside the PDP eh? that we always want to see there's factionalization in PDP. There was no factionalization. Different aspirants went into a race and each of them had his followers, had his supporters. All those supporters put together are now the supporters of PDP. Can you imagine the supporters of Amuri, supporters of Nani going to the uh, senatorial contest eh, together to face one unknown opponent? Uh, PDP has already clinched that, that much I know. And then you go to Ethiopia as House of Reps. Imagine the supporters of those three aspirants going with one force, eh? Ethiopia West Force, to face the opponent in the, all these parties, some known and some not too known parties. Hey, he said, don't do the same thing there. Uh, well, you do federal constituency. You come to Delta North, yes? Persons went to House of Assembly, primaries and all that. Some, I would say acrimonious, certainly not acrimonious, very tight. At the end of the day, a winner emerged. And the results were applauded because of the transparent manner in which the primaries were conducted. See, some people like to start at the top. In this game of politics, you don't start at the top, you start at the bottom. There are those who appear when it's time for contests. There are those who have been with the, with the grassroots from day one, dining with them, not these new Danny Hall meets that we now have. When it's time for primaries or elections, you start eating a maze with people along the road. You start going to a bar with them. Have they ever seen you in a bar before? Have you ever eaten with them before? Right? So the thing starts from long ago. Some have gone in there and the, the person they represented have got to discover that as soon as they got there, they distanced themselves from the voters. And so they waited for the next four years. That's why this thing is so good as every four years. They waited for the next four years and they got their results. Some did well in the House of Assembly and they were promoted, not by the governor, not by the president, right? By the voters. To go to House of Reps, you go to Senate. We see it like that. Some are sending people to Senate, not because they had been in House of Reps before or House of Assembly, but they thought such people as always supporting the government to make, sorry, supporting the party to ensure that PDP won election. So the people will say, okay, now it's your turn to go. We are ready for you. Not because the person was that rich, right? Not because the person had performed in that role before, but they just felt he should be rewarded. That's why PDP is one big family. We can, Delta State is a PDP state. So you thought, people thought 
the primaries were acrimonious. No. They, they were heated because whoever won a PDP primary election in Delta State is already occupying that position. That's why they are being congratulated. So to say uh, you won a, a, a PDP primaries in Oshibili South for House of Assembly. Who born dog? Who is coming to contest against you? You, you are already in the House of Assembly. That's why the primaries hmm, was more contentious than the general elections will be. The general elections will be carry go for whoever emerged as the PDP candidate. So it is good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it while it happened. And people are beginning to say, ah, this is not the same persons who we are fighting against each other. Now see, they're planning against uh, uh, the opponent, how they are going to take over uh, the whole state again. Of not, really, not really take over, retain. Retain the whole state again. Some people feel they can take over. That. It's impossible. No party, no party can take over the other state apart from the PDP. No. The, they are not ground. You don't see them. No, what would they show that they have done? Those who have been at the federal level, tell me what they will show now that they have. Uh, that is it their federal rules that are abandoned for Delta State to take care of? <laughs> is that what you are going to show to Delta that you have done? If I go to what happened in your party at the federal, in succession to our discourse, since you've been in the corridor of power for a long time now, there is this impression that Governor Kowa upstaged and destabilized the Bori dynasty. Some perceive and describe him as a traitor. How best can you analyze that impression? What I will tell you, young man, is a hey, Google be careful. In the express you they go so. If you put your mouth in a matter that concerns Ibori, Udwara, Okowa, and Mori, manager, <laughs> they go take you settle. Because there is nothing there's nothing between one and the other and there's nothing among them that is acrimonious. I mean, I was commissioner in Dwanga's time, right? I'm commissioner here, right? Uh, I was not too low down to in Ibori's time. When you see any two of them, we give them a um, <coughs> ten, ten steps gap. We don't go close to them. Because we never know what they discuss. They don't tell you what they discuss. Abi? Uh, we don't go, we don't go, Nasu, Nasu, Waka. There is nothing, there is nothing, and, and I repeat, absolutely nothing. And that is why you can see somebody you call Anokoa aid, eh? uh, Anokoa follower. The next minute is dining with Governor Dwanga. The next minute is running errands for Ibori. Abi, he said this person, ah, this is Boris Edu. Ah, we saw him in uh, uh, Governor Kowa's convoy. They were going for a social function. So you don't just go in and say, start insinuating things that this is what is happening and this is what is not happening. All of them put together. I won't even take them. The ones I've counted, about four or five of them. I won't take them as four or five persons. I'll just take them as one person. You understand? You've talked to this one, you have talked to the five of them. So don't ever make the mistake of running to Ibori, then you run to Dwanga, then you run to Kowa, then you run to manager, and you, and, you, and, you, and you start talking. You will talk yourself into trouble. <laughs> and that's the truth of the matter, because it's one person you are talking to. It's one person you are talking to. These are one and the same person. And that is why Delta State has been very, very, very stable. This is about the only state where a governor starts a project. The next governor sees that as a challenge to complete that project. He completes that one while he's doing his own. The next, the subsequent one completes. So you don't see Ibori's projects that are hanging, really. You don't see Udwaga's projects that are hanging. They've all been done. As we are here, as we speak, more projects are beginning in Delta State. The State Tenders Board is still awarding projects because the governor will not stop working until May 29, when he will hand over. May 29, 2023. That is when he will hand over. And because there has been a fine relationship among the leaders of the party from 1999 to date, there has been stability in Delta State. And I really want to commend these persons that you have mentioned. I commend them. 
because they have led the state aright. But you know, those who are far, far, far down, I mean, far, far, far down, who do not go to the steps to the church, just tell you, see what is happening, the altar, this is what is, and you not even enter the church, <laughs> the church door, you are seeing what is happening, the altar, nothing like that. Delta state is about the most stable PDP state in this country, with multi-ethnic, multi-ethnicity. Eh? It is still as stable as it is. Uh, we thank God for that. Uh, we really thank God for what is happening in Delta State. Yeah. That's it, sir. Uh, in the national though a PDP family affair have come and gone, but the deep throw more questions than answers, chief among which is the Southern Governor's declaration, which was held in Asaba, that the next president of Nigeria must come from the southern part of Nigeria. But it appears that not all governors subscribe candidly to that project. Fingers is being pointed at Governor Kowa, whom you know too well, to have betrayed the project. What is your take on that? Yeah, let me tell you, when the governors of the South made that very, very encouraging statement, it was made in Asaba, right? Very good. I'm happy we hosted it. They did not intend that they would plot a coup. The governors did not intend that they would plot a coup to put a satana as a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The intent was that they would work towards it. Let us work towards having a satana as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, right? In every battle, in every contest, three things you must know very well. You must know your strength. You must understand what strength you have. You must know your strength. You must know the strength of the enemy. And you must know the terrain where you are going to do battle. If you know your strength alone and you do not know the strength of the enemy, <laughs> you are gone. If you know the two and you do not know the terrain, whether it is slippery or it is uh, uh, firm or sandy, you are also done for. They did that, they did that, they made that declaration to let the country know that we as people of the South believe very firmly that the country be belongs to all of us. And we shall do battle. We shall do battle to get this done. Right? And uh, who would have expected that a governor, sorry, that an aspirant from the south, under this dispensation, would get the 247, be 237, or whatever, that uh, Wiki got? Who did he expect it? Right? And if, if they were going to remain firm on that resolution, It means you will reverse, you will reverse what is on ground. The number of delegates from the south. What is the figure? What's the figure of the number of delegates from the north? My governor knew that. The governor of Ekiti knew that. The governor of Akwaibom knew that. Edo and Rivers and Cross River. And all the other states, they knew that there were more delegates in the north than you have in the south. They have more local government. These were not the governors who created the local government. They had been created before they became governors. They had been created before some became chairman of a council. Right? So they knew that they were going to fight against a higher number of delegates. But they were going to use their wit. They would use their wit to see if they could get some. So it's not a, a matter of uh, somebody did this or somebody didn't do that. What had you? What is the strength of your army? The governor of Ekiti State, for example, could be going to battle. What is the strength of his army? What is the strength of the Edo State Army compared with the strength of the Kano Army? And where you at Jigawa? Compare that army with the army of Lagos that has 20, 27 recognized local governments in the constitution, right? How many local governments does Kano have? 40 or 44? 44. 44. 44 times 3. Multiply Lagos by 3. Then multiply a, a Delta State by 3. 25 local governments of Delta State by 3. Were you going to do battle with 25 times 3 against 44 times 3? 
and you expect that uh, for the first attempt it will be smooth sailing, I congratulate the governors of the South for this spectacular performance at the primaries of the PDP. A message has been sent across. And how did they perform so well? They didn't perform so well by saying, oh, Sata votes for South, oh, Nata votes for North, because that would have been a disaster. They ate into the North. Far North, not Middle Belt. They ate into the Far North. Abiola won primaries. Eh? Not because it was zoomed to the South, but long before he dreamt of being a president, he had been building mosques everywhere, establishing factories everywhere, giving scholarships to everybody in this country, building structures everywhere. It takes time. So you don't just jump up because the governor said it. Then whoever comes from the south will automatically become the president of Nigeria. No, it means you have not understood eh, the strength of your enemy. They started it. The governors have started it. It takes time for it to go down to the grassroots. It takes time. Um, say when you do juju for a lazy man, you go, you go, you go, you go disgrace native doctor. A juju when they take the fight, eh? you take a tie for a lazy man waste. He will not even go to the fight. <laughs> he will run away from the giant. So you don't just say, the hey, governors have said it, then you wake up from nowhere. You didn't even go up north to go and talk to delegates. You were dancing around, dancing around the south. Abi? Dancing around the south to talk to delegates. And one, there is one who left the party. He said, I will refer to him as an inspirational speaker. Uh, because you are this, you spoke so much English about economics and finance, then automatically you be the president of Nigeria. Who told you that? Every one of them you saw there was a practical economist. <laughs> They've been running their own economics. And their economies too. It is good the certain governors made that declaration. Eh? But they knew within themselves that it would be an uphill task. But all the same, they went for it. And it's only a foolish man who goes to a meeting and remains with what he went to the meeting with, without listening to others, without watching what is happening at the meeting. People have made contributions. Then your own is, even after 100 persons have made contributions, you speak 10 times, it's the same thing you came with that you're talking about. It means you learned nothing from that meeting. I've learned a lot. They were bold. They were very, very courageous. And those declarations made would have put some of the governors too in the back books of some people. But they have survived it. Do not forget, uh, before Yaradwa came on board, it was the South South People's con uh, Congress. We, we, we evoked a course on any person from the South South who accepted or who dared to accept to be vice president to anybody from the North. Yeah, we clapped, we clapped, we applauded it. The year I emerged. Good Lord Jonathan became the vice presidential candidate. Am I right? At that moment, the major, the major force kept quiet. You know, that was the major force in, 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 in the South South. They jubilated that an Ijo man, for the first time, has become the vice president of Nigeria. If tomorrow a Dertan is nominated as the vice president of Nigeria, then you expect me, Patrick Mubagai, to say, no, 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 if not the president, we will not take. That is, now you, the juju, go evil kill yourself. That's the Dertan juju. You are the one the juju will strike. We will take it. Whatever comes, we will take it. But they have fought a very good battle. For the first time, people from the south infiltrated Kano. Of course, that will make people respect Kwakwaso too in Kano Abi. Kwakwaso has made an new road to the south. What has been the problem? What pushed the governors of the south to do what they, are, to do what they did? Is that when they get there, they will forget that there are people from the south. You understand? Who should be spoken to? Who should be understood? Who should be carried along? Now they are beginning to realize that there are people in the south who should be carried along. But the PDP, I think, the delegates were most realistic that the way Nigerian democracy is now, the way Nigerian politics is now, it will be difficult to convince the ordinary illiterate man up north 
to vote for a southerner. It takes education to do that. And whoever becomes the president of Nigeria should concentrate on education of the people of the north. I'm a southerner, right? I should be talking of concentrating of education, on education of people from the south. I'm not doing that because we're already converts. And because those people are not educated, who are those suffering it? We, the educated ones, are suffering it. Let everybody be educated. Let us spend money on education. I praise good Lord Jonathan for that. Spend federal money, uh, building school for imageries. Those people have, at that time, did not appreciate what that education meant. Now they are beginning to praise Jonathan. Why is he becoming a little popular, just a little low? He should not be deceived that uh, he can be president of Nigeria again. Uh, why, is he, why is he being a little popular now? They are beginning to realize, the elite there are beginning to realize that those are Marjorie schools, if they had taken advantage of them, in the next 10, 15, 20 years, the narrative will change. That's what is getting to Jonathan said now. Say, eh, the North likes me. Oh. APC likes me. They want me to be president. They, we crash him. I mean, crash him seriously. To get up would, would be difficult. So for these primaries, the PDP primaries that have come and gone, a very successful exercise. And I mean very, very successful. No, initially, first, I initially you asked a question about acrimony after the primaries and other. No. You saw Wiki and uh, uh, President Atiku. I call you President Atiku now. I told you uh, the primary is the main thing. After the, he's the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I call me 29, right? You saw Wiki and himself. And the other people moving around, Wiki bowing down. I've never seen Wiki bow down to anybody in my life. Uh, he bowed down for Mr. President Atiku Abubakar. I was very happy about that. All the governors of the South, of the PDP stock, deserve commendation and i mean they deserve commendation for this outing they were swimming against the tide they were swimming against the current eh? nobody should be calling people names and in fact it is it is it is it is childish and very uncharitable for anybody to say the governors of the south did not work hard enough there is no way they will work hard enough to change the constitution and give us more delegates than the North would have. No. When you add Kano and, uh, and uh, Jigawa, they already have more delegates than uh, Lagos and Delta. Am I correct? And perhaps and, and Bayasa. That was one state before now. The two were one state before. Before they were split. So how can you say you are going to uh, just overnight and most of those persons, you know, most of those persons who are voting, eh, they, they have to tell the man there who they want to vote for so that they will help them to, to feed. They cannot write. They cannot read. And those people you are going to speak English to and you expect, or grammar to, and you expect them to understand. No, it's not. So one, I congratulate the governors of the South South. Eh? for giving themselves that uphill task. Uh, so my, in their final tenure now, my advice to them is, do not stop this, this battle when you leave office. Do not stop it, it has to continue. Sometimes too, one is happy. I can turn anything bad to good. Uh, if a certain had emerged the presidential candidate, maybe for the next eight years, we'll forget about the struggle for resource control and restructuring because we are now in charge. You know, when a, a Yoruba man is president, the Yorubas will not talk about uh, restructuring again. Uh, our man is there. Abi? Uh, if it had been an Igbo man, uh, let's no more talk about uh, the right to self-determination, which is a human right. Uh, uh, it will not be there again because an Igbo man is there. Let us support it. Same for South South. Let us test it now. Now that a Northerner will be president, let us see whether this struggle will not go an octave higher. It certainly will go an octave. So there's always something good that comes from a bad situation. I congratulate the PDP family for a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful convention. Forget about the stories they tell about uh, each person got $100,000, $200,000, $50,000. They've come back now. Some of these, <laughs> they are not different from what, from what they were when they got there. They are not different. Uh, is this the man who got $150,000, this one? Nothing. That's the truth. 
but it's always good to see it. Oh, they trust it, seven thousand dollars. Then they just double the other person's own to forty thousand dollars. And I saw the delegates. I mean, three at least three came from my world. Abi, I'm not seeing the dollars in their body. <laughs> I'm still a provider. <laughs> I, I'm still a provider. So don't listen to that. Those are the negative stories they tell about our party, so as to to break it down. As to wind this down, Professor, since I can see how busy your desk is, Governor Kowa of Delta State is among those pencil down as possible running mates to the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar. As a man you've known over time, what do you think positions him as a possible and plausible vice president of Federal Republic of Nigeria? His vice presidency is given to a governor who has performed. If I Yokoa has no contest, if it is given to a governor who has performed, and you are using that eh, to to estimate what he could do at the federal level, there is no contest. We are deltans. I keep telling pressmen, we are deltans. I am not going to preach to you about delta state. Go to the streets. Hmm? Go to the creeks. Go to the hospitals. Go to the schools and see for yourself whether Delta State has performed or not. I beat my chest anywhere I go to outside Delta State. I'm a Delta and I traveled to the north about two, three weeks ago. And all I kept saying is, and these people talk where we are talking. Where a Delta is talking, you people you are talking to, look at road. I don't know where last we saw this kind of road. In the local government headquarters. No, it's not done. So we are just, like I said before, in data say we are competing against ourselves. We are not competing against others, otherwise we'll go to sleep. We compete against ourselves. We achieved so much 20, 000, uh, yeah, 2020, uh, 2021, what did we achieve? Oh, much better. Now we are in 2022, what we are doing? Much, 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 much better. We keep moving. We are home. We are home to people who are chased from their states. I said it before. Data state should have been de de declared an IDP camp. All of them, all those bandits, those who are chased away by bandits, Boko and Rama, they're all here because Delta State is peaceful. You know what it costs to maintain peace. If Nigeria had that kind of attitude towards peace maintenance, they would not run here. They would have been in Abuja or Kaduna or Kanu. Abi? But they cannot be there. Delta State is safe, even. And what it costs to make Delta State safe. If you hear it, you'll be shocked. But we go out at night. I had friends who came from Ayoka the other day. I went to visit them. I said, and I just said, let's go out. Eh? What, this time, what was this time they were saying? 7.30. <laughs> this time, I said, just come out, you will see. Because they were in their hotel rooms. And when we drove out, we came back about 9.30 p.m., 10 p.m. The whole place was still filled with cars. People were moving. I said, no, Delta State is something else. I said, but when you are in your state, you will not know what is happening in Delta State. Somebody just pays some uh, prison guys and say, oh, this is what is happening in our state. Come to Delta State and see. All of us will relocate to Abuja at the appropriate time. <laughs> All of us will relocate, to Ab will, relocate, will relocate to Abuja. And Nigeria will see something they had not seen before. Somebody who sits down and plans Look at this drainage in Asaba. If you use that to assess Okowa, eh? what will it score him? 90 percent perhaps. You know, it has been a problem. See the way it is coming up. Stage by stage, phase one, phase two, phase three. We do roads in Delta State. We go, oh, five billion and all that. Yes, this is the total cost. We cannot take it out. Let's take phase one. From phase one, you go to phase two. Phase two, you go to phase three. So that there will be funds within this period for some other areas. Go to tertiary institutions. It's something else. There are experiments we've performed with our institutions in Delta State now, which if followed by, by tertiary institutions nationwide, will take us out of the present condition we find ourselves now. And so strike will be a, a thing of the past. But they need to learn that from Delta We need to export we need to export our products to Abuja. You understand? We need to export data state products to Abuja. Let them go and replicate what is happening here in Abuja. 
uh, we look forward to seeing how Delta State remain a calm family going into the election. Like you said, it's a walkover. Thank you so much. Yeah, don't even look forward. Look present. It is already here. <laughs> No need to look for it. Yes, yes, yes. We are already moving as a family. I've told you how we have been moving as a family. You need to see those who lost the primaries at local government, as, as of assembly level, as of the way they move is like we're just suspecting them. Did you really go into this uh, uh, contest with the intention of winning? Because the way you are relating with the winner is like uh, uh, you just went there to pretend. It's like nothing happened. Truly, it is like nothing happened. They are back to their normal lives. They are asking when the elections will go, what is there any other amendment on the Electoral Act so that we start moving forward. So I'm not looking forward. Eh? There's nothing to look forward to. We already see it here. We already seen it. That's the truth. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, you're welcome.